Rossi, what's up, dude? You ready for clotheslines and headlines post SmackDown? Absolutely. What'd you think of the show? Pretty good show, I thought. Better than Raw, for sure. That's for sure. Raw had that, uh, me and Rocco did a decent job going through it where we kind of took each segment and increment and looked at it and was like, yeah, maybe that wasn't as bad as we thought, but the, the vibe was terrible going in. But the vibes coming out of this SmackDown show felt felt normal, felt like what we've had the last few months here, felt, would you say, very Triple h if that makes yeah, sense. it felt like a Triple H show, and I also feel like the the biggest thing that hurt Raw to like the viewer was it was post Mania Raw. So you expected these big things, but when you think about it, when was the last post Mania Raw that actually had big things go down? Or New Orleans, maybe? If yeah, they, they watered down, but really sixteen, really 17, yeah, maybe everything post brand split has kind of not been that big of a deal. Yeah. It's kind of like they've done it on purpose and they knew they were getting a big rating and felt like it was on hold. Triple H held everything out or maybe it was really if the things are true, it was really felt rewritten and nonsensical. But what was interesting is NXT felt like a big show like that felt like a post mania show. Yeah, that felt uh, really, really good. You got a. You know, you, you had the matches and the angle at the end and a few new faces and vignettes. So it's just like. Everything that you would expect from the night before, you got on the black and gold brand. So yeah, it felt like a show that they wanted to make sure they highlighted their future, right? Like, like Dijak did a squash, um, Axiom, and like lost a hard fought match to Wesley. Dragon Lee beat Nathan Frazier in a, in a hard fought match. Those seem to be like kind of their four workhorses, right? Um, and then. You know, you 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 very easily got Braun turned heel while mm-hmm. obviously flipping Carmelo baby, and you got Cora and and Tiffany Stratton right in that mix with Indy. So I think they really did a good job at making that show all about the people that you really need to care about. Yeah, uh, NXT is in a good spot coming out of Stand and Deliver, unlike Raw. But I don't, you know, with this news of Triple H kind of throwing it out there that we're going to have a draft in a few weeks. A few, Real quick, my first question on that to you is, they're not stupid enough to go head-to-head against the NFL draft with their draft, are they? They're not going to swing the uh, I mean, I guess they theoretically could because the first that is round. A few weeks. Yeah, the first round is really the important one, and that's Thursday. Yeah, but that so, second round still c- cooks, you know, second and third round still yeah. cooks. Yeah, so, like, say you started on, I mean, that could be a way to draw draw people in, I guess. I mean, that's, I didn't even think of that, but that's kind of a yeah. fun idea. That's the first thing I thought about. I said, no, don't do that. But yeah. I could, see, I could see them trying to swing their dicks and maybe play K the network and think it's a good idea somehow, but uh, we'll see in a few weeks, I suppose. But, uh, oh, I, I think they, they're in a good spot to have a draft. We were kind of saying that the last few months anyways, that post-mania is kind of the perfect time to have it. And it's not right away, like kind of around, around backlash. So let things play out post-mania for how, how it falls out, because that's how it always does. And then let's just start fresh in a few weeks. I, I, I love it. I like the vibe. There's no chance that Vince is going to get a show and Triple H can get a show behind, behind the scenes, right? That's just a nice that, that would be entertaining. Um, but in yeah, I mean... Way. I think that best case scenario would be maybe the Monday, Friday coming out of backlash. I feel like that's probably the route they want to go. Although they'll probably do Friday and the following Monday as opposed to Monday, Friday, because then it could be like the weekend hook. But yeah, you get the but who knows? Yeah. 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 That's a good time because backlash is going to be, you know, stuff that's going on already. So you really don't want to break that shit up. Yeah, I'm sure that's going to give us something to sink our teeth into here as we get closer to. I smell a fantasy mock draft coming up. No, no, no if hands or butts for sure. Oh, no doubt. But uh, now that we, I was doing that stuff on audio. Now that we got YouTube, hands down, we're going to pull out all the bells and whistles for that one. Can have we'll charts have, on the video and everything. We'll have charts, we'll have rounds, we'll have pro, procrastinators. We'll have a, we'll have a whole gamut of things going on here for that. So, uh, you know, kudos to Triple H for wetting our whistle on that one. But uh, so we hit NXT real quick positive show we hit the draft news coming out positive news while we're on the news train before we end with that smackdown what do you think of aew heading to london i think it's a stadium i think it's a really smart thing i think that they i mean a lot obviously the first thing everybody thought of was how are they going to fill that place and here's the deal they don't have to fill it right 
Yeah. They just have to make it look good, which I don't think they're going to have any problem doing. Um, I mean, Meltzer reported today that 25,000 people signed up for it in their first day. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it, when you think of it, I mean, they, they can bring Osprey in, who, who yeah. will help, the, you know, anytime Omega's involved in, in England, it'll be a big deal. And then, you know, you can even put Soraya in a title match. And that's a big deal in England, too. Um, way bigger deal in England than it is anywhere in the U.S., right? So um, I think they're in a really good spot to make that happen. Um, they're going to obviously have to heat the product up. But at the same time, I don't, do they really have to to still sell that? I mean, I think I think they can get the 50-60 without much of an issue. Um, I mean, they me expecting Punk to be back by then. I mean, that would be a yeah. good time to do the six-man, right? With FTR winning, you kind of figure he's heading back. All the tea leaves and all the bullshit, I'm sure it ties into something. When I said when I heard 80, I initially thought 40 would be excellent for them, and 30 should be the goal. With a 25 pre-sale, they should easily surpass that goal. of You know, that's just me in my head. But 40, I think, is a home run for them, getting half of that. I think you could tarp it off or have a big entrance way, and they can make that look cute. But if they go 40, 40 gate and then the rest papered or even 40 papered to an extent, I still think it's a great success because they're going to set records. And and it, it makes them feel bigger. It gets them out of Chicago, out of monotony. Um, do you think they have all out with all in? Or It, it seems it. I mean, Anthony Bowens tweeted um... – you know, we Anthony Bowens tweeted the next know, week. Yeah. Oh yeah, good call. Um, I mean, I think they will, and, that, and that's what makes me think about a couple different things, right? Option one, maybe that's when they roll out a streaming deal. Now HBO Max has a um, new yeah. app that's launching next week, so that could yeah. come with announcements. Um, but you'll also notice that Warner Warner Brothers is one of the sponsors too. So that yeah, also makes me yeah. think maybe what if this show ends up being on cable? That would be that would be uh, smart, really. You know, that would be smart if they're getting the pay per view buys in the the week or so after. It's weird, weird, but I'm you know, they have big TV shows every week. I think they could figure that out and map that out, no problem. But uh, yeah, it's Warner Brothers hundred year. That's that's something for them to tie in with AEW. That shows for a good investment there. And um, Uncle Davey said that they're nowhere close to being streaming. If you want yeah. To be, you know. Yeah, I mean, but still, like, this is, I mean, it's only April. You, you still have four months to, to make that happen. Um, and what I, the other interesting thing was Live Nation was, like, in charge of the ticketing side of it in there. They never lose money. So um, I, I think that they've got a good plan in place. And I, I feel I feel optimistic for them. I think I'm actually excited about it, if you believe it. Yeah, I think it's a good thing for them. You know, I think it's for sure. It, like, exactly, exactly. You put the words on my excitement. I really haven't had excitement for them since pre-pandemic, or and then if not, it's been since Punk or Spotty. Very Spotty. I, I'm more invested in guys than product over there. But um, agree, agree. But 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 uh, I think uh, you know, I do watch for the most part every every week. So you know, it's fun to talk a little AEW here as we kind of delve into SmackDown. We're usually in the WWE as. I, you know what that means does this uh the AEW side of things here but uh i don't know it's a pretty big story and kudos to AEW. so i figured we'd bring them out and chat about it real quick yeah and wwe is going to be there for money in the bank not at wembley stadium but i think at the o2 um in july so it's kind of cool for the people in england that they're going to get two pretty big deal shows um mm-hmm. in like a 60 day span so that's that's pretty good they're always a great crowd so they deserve it mm-hmm. Fucking weirdos. I'm just <laughs> they are. They are. But they, they could also, that's the other thing too, is AEW can do tie ins with all your British promotions too, because yeah. they're not tied in with WWE anymore. Yeah. Smart, smart, smart. No, yeah, the sky's the limit. All right. So, SmackDown, Mike, what was your biggest takeaway on the positive side of things from SmackDown? When, you, when I say SmackDown positive, what comes to your mind? Uh, felt like a Triple H show. <laughs> that was my biggest positive. Um, I mean, the fact where it really hit to me was the long matches. And the fact Ricochet got a singles win that kind of seemed to come out of nowhere. I don't think that happens if Vince was right the show. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Yeah, nowhere in sight with Braun either. So I don't know why R- Ricochet was out there stowing her alone. But hey, whatever. Uh, yeah, the, you know, it was kind of like Sheamus got his wing back on on Gunther in the in the tag, not physically, but the bra- brawling brutes defeating Imperium. You know, you throw those six guys out there with their history, they're not going to disappoint whatsoever. Leading in right into Ricochet, right into Triple H, a few backstage segments, and 
I don't know, man. It just flowed. It just flowed strongly. Uh, you have the show line storyline with KO and Sammy. You had Solo taking out Sammy at the end. Or excuse me, you had Solo taking out KO at the end. Cost Sammy the victory in Jay. You had the cute tease with Jay at the end. I really like that. Where he's just like, nah, man. Like, we've gone too far. He's, yeah, we've been through some shit, but it's Sammy. And then he's like, nah, fuck you, Sammy. He super kicked him. He's like, I'm doing that shit. So, you know, they, they did a good job of beefing up the bloodline when Roman's not around, which is important for it. And, it, you know, it, it did give Jay that moment of, that moment of that baby face moment where he was with the garner in the cheers and get the big pop. So, like I said, man, this show flowed. It was, it was borderline very good. You know? Yeah. Judgment Day got the heat back too. Judgment um, Day got the heat back too. We so, Similar there because that's obviously going to be a big story going in the backlash. That that's probably going to be the co-main event. Um, if not, you know, probably I'm, I'm assuming they do Cody Brock, but I mean that's going to probably be second from the top. So especially with Bad Bunny and and Priest involved. So um, yeah, I mean that was the big takeaway too is that you know it just felt better. Like it felt like if this was Raw, it would have left a much better taste in people's mouths. I think than uh, the Raw show did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you think's next for Rhea? Do you think with the draft coming up, do you think that the Judgment Day ends up on Raw and she ends up on SmackDown? Because they heavily hinted that all superstars are available kind of individually without saying it, really. It, it may not be a bad thing um, yeah. because crowds are going to be behind her, I feel like, and they're not going to be behind the rest of the Judgment Day. So that's not a bad thing. Um, Raquel feels like they're getting they're really trying to heat her up. Um, and live even to an extent too, um, but it almost felt like on Raw Raquel was kind of being teased as a Bianca opponent too. I mean, if you look at this woman's roster, Raquel seems like the next up, right? So you yeah, gotta think, like, yeah. yeah, you gotta think. You know, heel baby, she makes the most sense for Rhea right now. Yeah, and they have that that pass that they can easily go off of, and they actually even hinted it. From but uh. What about the Street Profits? You think the Street Profits make it out alive? Or do you think, what do you think? Man, they, uh, two takeaways from Raw for me there was that they really threw that match out there quickly. They didn't have to do that. I felt like that should have been something that maybe even could have been gone down at Backlash with yeah. the, um, the Street Profits having won that four way on, on Mania Saturday, right? Um, mm -hmm. That felt rushed. And not only that, but the Street Profits sucked in that match, right? They, they screwed up a couple things at the finish. Um, so I, yeah, I mean, if you're going to break up one team, um, it would have to be either them or Alpha Academy, but Alpha Academy feels like they're breaking up anyways, right? Uh, yeah, it just feels like it's just going that way anyways. Uh, I don't know, but what else you got to add to the show, man? It was just, I don't want to sit here and gush about it. it. Was What was a negative thing that you took away from it? Um... I mean, really nothing. It's just, I mean, I guess nothing really felt fresh if I was going to really, it was just continuations yeah. of feuds, um, which, you know, with backlash, that's going to happen. So I don't even think that's a negative. Um, it's pretty clear that there's still going to be bloodline Sammy, uh, Sammy story. Maybe that six man that we thought was going to involve Reigns will actually be the Usos and um, Solo. Solo against Riddle, KO, and Sammy. And that's a cool match too. That's so really cool that's match. actually really good for riddle so i'm all for it and you know if you're not going to have reigns for a pay-per-view and the bloodline is still going to be in the the forefront that's kind of a, a really good match to do yeah so you know that's let's kind of look ahead at backlash here we got the judgment day versus the lwo with bad bunny either way whatever maybe a six man tag team whatever uh we got brock and cody unofficial but strong assumption then we're going to have that six man that you just talked about. We could have Bel Air. It's let me get your takeaway from this, Mike. What do you do? You they on Raw, they strongly hinted that they might merge those women titles. Do you think that's a thing? And if so, how how far out do you think that is? That almost felt like a Mania 40 preview to me. Okay. Um, you know, do it in front of the crowd before they split things up. And I mean, even if you're gonna, what I've noticed with WWE too is when they, you know, they do the draft, they kind of accentuate the the brand split at that point, and they don't do as much cross for the first couple months, or they try not to. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, obviously the two women's champions aren't going to be on the same show. So, I really took it as, you know, 
hey, see, gauge a crowd reaction, kind of maybe start to prepare for that for next year. And, I mean, ultimately, when you think of big matches that this women's division kind of has still that they haven't really done, that's the biggest one by far. Mm-hmm. Or if they want to, either one with Ronda either. But Ronda's yeah. ice cold. Um, so let's just, you know, think like a smart and whatever. Uh, so they're not going to be on the same show. They're separate women's champions. The, the Street Profits of LA are going to be on one show, and then Rhea and maybe the Judgment Day will be on the, another show. So it's definitely, like you said, something in the future. I just don't know how far down the line they want to look at, or if they were going to get really cute and maybe try to merge these titles at Backlash and have you know a super big match there. But I don't necessarily think so. I didn't think so. I just wanted to make, see what you thought on that, and I think it's too early. But and I and would you even want them merged? I wouldn't because I feel like. Especially when you look at the two night mania format, having a big woman's match on each night is the way you want it to be. Um, mm-hmm. And especially this year, they both delivered. So um, yeah. I think that, you know, obviously they've got a lot of work to do with that, like undercard, like who's up next with that women's division. Um, you've got girls that you can throw into it pretty quickly if you need to, like your Becky's or Ronda's, but you don't want to rush matches like that either. So um, they really have to do it. Seems like the two they're heating up right now are Raquel and Liv. Um, I mean, really, you can make fresh matches with both girls with either of them. Um, yeah. And, I mean, as a backlash show, you're not really picking somebody that's going to be a threat to win the title, I don't think. So they're probably a good matchup for that. Yeah, and then you got – so let's just talk the women's division real quick. You got Rion leading SmackDown. You got Bianca leading Raw, we are assuming. I assume Becky and Seth are going to head to SmackDown just for a fresh coat of paint. They kind of seem to do that anyways. I would leave maybe leave Ronda and Shayna there to have some organic Knicks too. Those are also fresh matchups for Rhea. Either then you can maybe go live and Raquel the other way for on Bianca's side of things, perhaps. But I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll see. And then you got the is Bailey. What's up with Bailey? Is is what do you think? Of, what's up with Bailey? You think she wants to go to Japan with her girl, or do you think she's just taking a break? See, some say that. <laughs> She was pulled on Raw right before she went out because the reasoning being, this is also, you know, we're getting smarky here, but let's do it. Fuck it, right? The reason being that, well, damage control was losing, so they didn't want Bailey out there when they were when they were losing to make them all look weak. So, theoretically, that kind of makes sense, I guess. But could it be a fabrication of a fake story to for whatever? I don't know. Who the hell really knows? But, you know, it's interesting. Uh What's your vibe on Bailey? You think she sticks around or what? I, it almost felt to me that they were maybe starting to tease that those two girls are going to have to do it on their own. Um, mm-hmm. And especially like you look at everything that, that Bailey's been doing on social media. Bailey historically is like Sasha. When they have issues with management, they just go into hiding. She hasn't done that this week, right? She, she did the tweet on Saturday night. Um, she said like something like bye. Maybe that's just like damage control is done. Um, because you you know what what really made me think of this is I, I was thinking about the women's division. I'm like who's next up? Like Money in the Bank's in what two months, three months? Who yeah. would win that right now for the women? Right? Um, <laughs> you say you say Raquel. We say Liv. Like that's probably one and two. Liv just did it, so it won't be her. But Raquel feels like she's the natural next, like she's the one maybe ready for the next title match. So yeah, you don't really want to do it then. Yeah. And then immediately brought me to EO. Like if they're ever going to give EO the shot, the roster's kind of lining up for her to do it now. So maybe there's a split coming there and they just kind of wanted to foreshadow that because the draft will eventually break them up. Yeah. Uh, so looking forward here on Raw, we got Lita and Becky versus Liv and Raquel. Getting cute there is like how long do they promise Lita to be around? Is that just a cute way to get off of it or what? Yeah, I mean, everybody still seems to think Trish is going to turn eventually, right? Um, I so <laughs> I mean, I guess you could if you then want to do a Trish and, and uh, Becky match, um, which you know Becky kind of seems so far away from the women's the singles titles, right? So that's not maybe a bad idea for you know, Saudi, which is only two shows from now. Um, and then you got to get Becky freed up to do whatever from there on in the summer. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, 
if you told me that Liv and Raquel were gonna win, like I almost feel like they should. Like I don't really want to see Lita matches anymore. Sorry. Yeah. I like the Becky. I like Becky doing something important. I like the belts on her, but um, whatever. All right, Mike. Well, that's kind of where we're at right now. Positive SmackDown show. Uh, coming off a lackluster Raw show, so there really wasn't. You know, you got a bunch of really good matches from the three to three and a half star range, whatever. If you want to get Pacific, right? Um, we touched on the draft here. We did some draft pro- early draft thoughts on where things might head out. We kind of touched the where we want the women's division, how to shake out post draft there. We get a vibe going forward. So, uh, I don't know, man. What you think? You ready to get out of here? Yeah. I mean, I just want to hear from you really quickly. Um, kind of to my point I just said. So, Money in the Bank's three pay per views from now. That kind of feels like the, the reboot of maybe some of these divisions, like it always is. Mm-hmm. Um, who's your Who's your winners right now? Well, we're going to have a few things coming up here. we got the draft. we got King of the Ring. Uh, King of the Ring, I think tri- Triple H will want to uh, elevate someone not to the world title. I think fresh coat of paint maybe on Chad Gable there. And I don't really necessarily think Chad Gable is ready for, say, money in the bank. So I think Chad Gable will get King of the Ring. King, you know, give, give him a nice push there. But um, hell, man, you could get cute and go... I don't know why Cody's popping my head. That's lame. LA Knight is fun, but I don't know if they'll really go with him. And I don't really necessarily see him being the one beating Cody. Uh, <laughs> Florian slipped there. Being the one beating Roman. Uh, maybe if he was 10, 5 to 10 years younger, for sure. Um, Montez would be fun if they actually did break up the Street Profits. But I would say perhaps maybe... Maybe Cody, and that's how Cody's off on distracted with Brock here. Uh, he does maybe two matches, Saudi and uh, Backlash, and then maybe he declares himself for Money in the Bank. He was supposed to win Money in the Bank last year, and maybe that's a way to get – there's a loophole where they get one title in there, and then Cody finally wins his t- the WWE title, and Roman can continue as world title, world uh, universal champion, and then they kind of swipe their hands, and they're good, and then let's make good in there. So – I would say Cody. Uh, LA Knight is fun. Of course, my heart would say Riddle. But um, I don't know. I would say Cody. What about you? Yeah, Cody, I feel like, has to be the answer because especially after last year when they kind of killed Money in the Bank dead for the men's side, yeah. um, you're not going to give it to somebody else to elevate them to then lose it because obviously this is eventually going to be Cody's Cody's win. Yeah. So, I mean, you give it to a guy like Knight, then it just kind of feels just like last year. It's like just waiting for him to fail. Um, I know some people had said theory, like let's try the theory thing again. But we'll again, if he's not going to lose, he's not going to win the title, then don't do it. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel like it has to be Cody. And, you know, that is a good way for him to say, hey, I, I didn't get it done at Mania 39, but I'm going to get it done at Mania 40. Um, because, yeah, I think that's more likely than SummerSlam. Um, because I or think that get it, or get it and say, I want it at the stadium. I'm, I'm that's the baby face thing to do is not to chill on it is to fucking get it and say, I want it in Detroit. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, inducted, I inducted my father in the hall of fame to put a stamp on his career in Detroit. I'm putting a stamp on my story in Detroit and it kind yeah. of, it kind of talks to itself that way. Your doors open either way in yeah. that scenario. So that's why I think it's gotta be Cody and then women, um, I'm holding out, holding out for like the Io Shirai's of the world, but I also think Chelsea Green with this character kind of yeah, feels like the perfect fit. That would be interesting. I just and 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 she could lose. Exactly. Yeah. They haven't really have they had one and lost yet on the women's side. I Women, don't so. I don't think so. I don't think so either. Without really, she could be a cash in that night and lose too. Yeah. Like, although they did that with Liv, I could see her carrying it for a while too. Yeah. So cool. All right, Mike. Well. Before we leave, congratulations on your fifth national championship in the last, what, 24 years? Yeah, I mean, since 99, so. 99, so. There you and go. When, you take, when you take the COVID year out, really 23 when you think about yeah, it. But, hey, who, who's counting? Pump your brakes there. We, 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 we got it out of the way. We don't need to add a fucking year or t- subtract a year. But you're officially a blue blood, so congratulations, buddy. Thank you, and I appreciate the shout-out on Monday. I did listen to you guys and Rocco, uh, you and Rocco on Tuesday morning. So um, I wanted to jump on with you guys, but yeah. you, you wouldn't have wanted me. Let's put it that way. I took – I took. Uh, I low-key took uh, 
took it in like I did it for going to a game. So hey, that's that's all good, and um, we'll be back next year. So don't worry about it. Cool. All right, I'll see your ass in the dunk. All right, Mike. Thanks, buddy. Catch you soon, pal. All right, later, man.